Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and today we've got another detailed weather forecast coming your way and a brand new tool from Whitney.com which we'll be using throughout this weather forecast as well. We've got a massive cold snap that's expected to extend over New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania once in a decade weather event which we're going to be talking about in great detail. We're also going to touch on the tropics and see what's happening up there and a general weather forecast of the remainder of Australia. We'll also take a look at a strong cold front expected to impact the Perth metro area. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. So just start off with a general look around Australia before we dive into the New South Wales Victoria weather event. Well, we've got a strong low pressure system starting to develop offshore from Brisbane and the Gold Coast at this time. Now that is a key feature in the forecast. So pay attention to this and I'll get into that in just a minute. We've also got some rain that's streamed through South Australia and is now starting to collide with the Tasmanian coastline. That's dumped some relatively heavy falls here and there, especially along the Air Peninsula and the Mount Lofty Ranges outside of Adelaide. We've had up to 30 millimetres of rain for some locations. Uh, so some very good falls out there. And there's a little bit better than what we did expect it. The rain is now moving into Victoria. It isn't too heavy, but it also isn't light per se. Uh, so just a couple of heavy falls expected through there, maybe 10 to 20 millimetres or so on the western parts of Victoria and Tasmania as well in for about 20 millimetres tonight, especially on the northern side of things. Now I'm going to jump straight into the detailed weather forecast right now, which is for this low pressure system offshore from Brisbane and the Gold Coast. This is very important at this time. This is a big part in next week's uh, weather. So we're getting it, we're going to get onto that right now. You can see right now the low pressure system already starting to develop offshore. It's got some pretty heavy showers and thunderstorm activity embedded in it. It looks really nasty to be honest on the East Midwest forecast here. And this is going to be sticking with us for the next 10 days at least. So pay close attention, especially for those in New South Wales. I'm just going to bring this forward about two days until about Saturday. And you can see this low pressure system deep into the Tasman Sea at this time. And it's really starting to strengthen a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity streaming into it uh, from the northeastern side of things and it's starting to wrap up into some pretty strong winds as well and some very heavy rainfall on the southern side of it as well and you can see it here on the pressure with the isobars it's 996 millibars very deep indeed and this is early Saturday morning a couple of showers streaming up the New South Wales coastline as well it looks like Saturday there might be the chance of some rainfall especially around Newcastle and at Tyree on that little piece of coastline that really does jut out there but I wouldn't be expecting more than 10 or 15 millimeters a couple of uh, strong wind gusts as well expected there as well and I'd also like to say over the coming 24 to 36 hours as this low pressure system does develop because of its proximity to the uh, Brisbane area, there'll likely be some gusty winds and maybe some showers or two around the Brisbane area, but the showers more so unlikely at this time. Now, just looking at this front here as it gets itself deeper into the Tasman Sea, it's just textbook East Coast low type activity here. And that's exactly what the system is going to be. However, it's going to be a bit of an unconventional East Coast low. It's going to be a lot further south and it's going to have a lot more Arctic characteristics to it than a typical East Coast low does. Typically when you see East Coast lows, they're just small, powerful, low pressure systems just offshore from the New South Wales coastline. This is a huge, powerful low pressure system that's going to be dragging in a lot of sub-Arctic air on the southern side. And this becomes very apparent Saturday evening when temperatures are set to plummet across Tasmania and Victoria, powered by a high pressure system that's going to be situated over parts of Queensland and New South Wales, but more so powered by the strong southeasterly and southerly winds that are going to be dragged up in the wake of this low pressure system just because of how it's rotating. There's going to be a very cold uh, wind chill and some very cold showers as well streaming up Saturday night into early Sunday morning. Now, Sunday morning, we're expecting temperatures to plummet below zero across the highlands of Tasmania into the agricultural parts of Victoria. They will be between two and four degrees Celsius, a little bit warmer up in New South Wales, but still very cold in the alpine areas as well. And there'll be a couple of showers to go along with it as well too. Uh, Hobart will start to receive direct impacts from this low pressure system sometime Sunday. There's some heavy rainfall coming through Sunday night and that will turn to snowfall for areas above 400 metres in elevation. It's going to be very low falling snow at this time. And then once this weather system kicks itself up into Victoria as well, the rainfall gets itself up there, which will also happen sometime Sunday morning into early Sunday afternoon. Snowfall will also be through Victoria in elevations above six or 700 metres along the Alps and about 800 metres in other areas of Victoria. There's going to be some light falls across the majority of the state, to be honest. And then snowfall will also extend into New South Wales for elevations above about eight or 900 metres around the Alps. And as you get further north, closer to about 11 or 1200 metres, but still bitterly cold conditions throughout the course of Sunday. There's going to be places of, through a lot of New South Wales and Victoria, especially close to the Great Dividing Range that don't get above 10 or 11 degrees Celsius throughout the day. You can see poor orange in, Victor in New South 
South Wales, rather, yeah, having a maximum of five degrees Celsius on Sunday. Bitterly cold there. And that certainly is a very plausible forecast. Just the amount of cold Arctic or subarctic air that this uh, low pressure system is going to be dragging up from the south. It's going to be plummeting those temperatures. Wind chills will be very far below zero as well because the winds aren't going to be standstill in a weather event like this. They're going to be gusting up towards 30 kilometers an hour and the rainfall will be bordering on freezing. Now, this is Sunday afternoon uh, and into early Sunday evening. You can see as this low-pressure system gets itself closer to Tasmania, it starts to warm up just a little bit there, but snowfall and freezing rain still continuing along the highlands of Tasmania, especially around Mount Wellington. And uh, I think it's um, I, I, Ben Lomond, I believe, on the east coast of Tasmania that's also going to be picking up some good snow. Those mountains around there will also be picking up some good snowfall uh, throughout the course of Monday, and then that snow and freezing rain, like I said, continuing into Victoria and at New South Wales and actually making itself quite far north as well. You can see snow, like I said, outside of uh, Tamworth here with a couple, uh, with some showers that have some embedded snowfalls in them. It's very hard to see on this map, so I'm going to change the, fall, uh, the weather map here over to a precipitation map. Now, this gives us an idea of what precipitation is going to be falling when, and I'm going to be using this because the rainfall throughout a weather event like this, with the exception of the east coast of Tasmania, is going to be very light and at times only moderate. You can see freezing rain and then heavy heavy snow falling across the Australian Alps. That's very typical. The grey areas is rain mixed with snow, which you can see here, all the purple grey areas. The full-blown grey areas is no precipitation. And then, as you can see up here around Bathurst, we're also expecting some wet snow and rain with snow uh, throughout the course of Sunday and then into Monday. And that rain and snow and full-blown snow makes it up towards the Barrington Tops outside of Newcastle and then the mountains outside of Tamworth as well. It's going to be freezing cold and prime conditions for snowfall up there as well. And as you can see, throughout the course of Monday, Monday is going to be the big snow day by the looks of things. You can see uh, as this precipitation expands across New South Wales, we're expecting snow into the afternoon and evening. And uh, this low pressure system just ridiculously strong at this point, 979 millibars, very strong indeed um, for the Tasman Sea. And it is very strong in comparison to how close it is to the uh, coastline of Australia as well. Just look at the expanse of snow up here outside of Tamworth. All these areas around Armidale, Tamworth, down towards the Barrington Tops and then the mountains outside of Sydney as well, around Bathurst and uh, across towards Orange and then down towards the uh, Australian Alps, expecting some good snowfall uh, throughout the course of this weather event, starting from Sunday afternoon, extending right through Monday, Tuesday, and even in towards Wednesday as well, expecting some snowfall through Wednesday. Uh, and even in towards Thursday, it looks like there's going to be a little bit of snow as far north as Tamworth and Armadale as well. It's just going to be uh, basically half a week to an entire week's worth of freezing cold rain and that is going to be adding up to some pretty decent snowfall accumulations. Actually, you can see here on the new snow map over the next 10 days, expecting some very decent snowfall accumulations for these areas, up towards four or five centimetres in places. And then for the mountains outside of Tamworth, up towards five or six centimetres, and then Barrington Tops as well, expecting about five centimetres too. Now, the snow that's been marked here on the forecast for the um, agricultural and low-lying parts of New South Wales. I think that's a little bit of a model fluke here. I don't think that's going to actually materialise as what the Eastern Bef is saying, but I do also think that there is a very slim chance for the hills in this part of New South Wales, areas that rise about 100 or 200 metres above the ground levels, to actually pick up a couple of flurries of snow, especially Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. The chances do start to decrease a little bit on Thursday. Uh, very good snow actually expected uh, through the New South Wales Alps as well, up to 20 or 30 centimetres of the stuff. That's about, uh, off memory, about an eighth or maybe even a sixth of what the annual total is. So some very heavy snowfall expected there. And across Tasmania as well, it's going to be their best week for snow, probably for the entire winter season, up to 35 centimetres through the mountains through Tasmania. So a lot of snow expected there. In fact, it's a very rare example where in the 10-day forecast, there's going to be more snow for the Australian side of things than there is for New Zealand. That is very rare indeed. New Zealand is actually going to be warmer than average next week. So for those watching there, hello. Um, uh, and you are in for some warmer than average conditions. Now, I do hope that that mix of the precipitation map and the snowfall forecast and also the amount of rain accumulation that's going to be coming through for the next 10 days has helped you paint a picture of what your location is expecting in terms of winter weather for this event. However, if it hasn't, please do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll endeavour to add it in the next video and I'll get back to you with a personal weather forecast as well for your location. In terms of rainfall, like I said, through New South Wales, over four days, there's really not much rainfall expected. Widespread accumulations above two or three millimetres, but the heaviest accumulations, which 
which look to be outside of orange, only about 25 millimetres. Uh, Victoria is going to be a little bit heavier, especially along the coastline, up towards 30, maybe 35 millimetres in places, but again, nothing too crazy there. Malakuta at a chance of picking up 50 millimetres, and then Tasmania is going to be the really wet one. In fact, there will be places, especially on the east coast and the south coast, expecting up towards 150 millimetres of rainfall, and the highlands through Tasmania as well, expecting up to 100 millimetres of rainfall. So it is going to be a wet uh, weather event in there. And like I said, there are actually going to be some relatively strong wind gusts in this weather event as well. Um, throughout the central parts of New South Wales, the peak wind gusts from this weather event average around 40 to 50 kilometres an hour with some high gusts expected across mountains. So that wind chill is going to be absolutely awful. Temperature is going to be very close to freezing and wind chill will be significantly below freezing for these locations. So just stay safe and stay inside and stay as warm as you can get in the wake of this weather system. Like I said, Sunday through to Thursday is when it's going to be happening and there'll be detailed weather forecasts on the day of each uh, day when this weather event is taking place. That's a very long-winded forecast of this weather event. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but it's certainly a long forecast. We're just going to take a brief general look at the Australian weather before we move over to Western Australia. And you can see from the rainfall accumulation map here, it is actually looking relatively dry, especially across the nation's north. No surprises there. However, that rainfall that we were talking about a couple of days ago in far north Queensland has since been dropped. Interestingly, there's now a bit of rain for Western Australia. We're going to touch on that in just a second, but it doesn't look like there's going to be much more in the way of severe weather events happening across a lot of Australia, apart from this east coast low pressure system, this basically this giant Arctic east coast low. It's going to get struck straight into the West Australian weather forecast for you right now. So in terms of what's actually happening, well, spoiler alert, it's going to be later next week. I forgot to pull the forecast back. However, if we do pull the forecast back to today, we can see that the high pressure system is currently dominating the Western Australian weather uh, scene right now. Just a couple of showers, very stable air mass currently over the top of Western Australia. And that's providing cool, calm conditions, of course, as we know with all high pressure systems. The chance of a couple of showers for the Perth area today and a couple of showers persisting into tomorrow for the south coast, but not making it into the wheat belt. It will be a cool morning tomorrow. A lot of places expected to go very close to freezing, if not below freezing for one or two locations. And then as you can see, already starting to develop the next big weather system over here. This is a big moisture pool in the Indian Ocean. A high pressure system has moved out of the Indian Ocean, or at least the West Australian side of the Indian Ocean, and it looks like it's made way for a much more unstable air mass and a couple of low pressure systems here. Now this is very important because as we pull through this weekend, we can see them fire up along a bit of a trough line here, and a little bit of a low pressure system comes into the Perth metro area. In fact, this weak low pressure system might have a couple of heavy showers and storms on Sunday. This is a pretty weird weather event to come through. It looks like a tiny cyclone, in all honesty, moving into the Perth metro area, a tiny weak subtropical cyclone, uh, and it is quite a weird thing to be having on the forecast, but it does look like a couple of showers are possible on Sunday, and they're really only concentrated at the Perth coastal plain, and maybe as far south as Bunbury and Bustleton. So that is very interesting. But again, that is not what we're talking about in terms of severe weather. For that, we're going to pull things forward towards Tuesday and Wednesday next week. And you can already start to see this very strong cold front starting to develop. Now, this is very interesting. It starts to uh, lose all of its convection by the looks of things. Like I said, with the last cold front here, the environment this time of the year, very unfavorable for thunderstorm activity, but it still looks like this uh, weather system completely dies on itself before getting towards the southwest coast, but it's still going to have a very big band of some pretty uh, moderate to heavy rainfall by the looks of things. You can see here, rainfall accumulations in the three hour are going to be up towards 15 millimeters, and you're going to be looking at about six or seven hours worth of rainfall when this weather event crosses the coast. Same time set as yesterday's forecast, Wednesday afternoon into early Thursday morning. The rainfall will be at its worst and sweeping through early Thursday morning and still a couple of showers persisting through Thursday and into Friday when the weather should completely clear out then. The condition is going to be very cold in the wake of this cold front as a high pressure system builds itself up Friday and into Saturday and you can see just a really strong weather system here moving down towards the southern states of Australia. But I'm going to talk about that in tomorrow's weather forecast so stay tuned for that. I've also got a little bit of rainfall streaming in from the north from this weather event as it makes its crossing along Western Australia. That's pretty typical for a big cold front, as especially as we've seen this year, the rainfall making it as far north as Carnarvon and Coral Bay. However, it looks like a little bit of rainfall streaming in as far north as Caratha and Port Hedland as well up in the Pilbara region. So that is interesting to have on the forecast. What is also interesting is the fact that the forecast models say pretty much the exact same thing in terms of what's actually happening with this weather event now in terms of timing and what's actually happening 
the structure of the front and also how much rainfall is expected. So I've got a very high degree of confidence in saying that next Wednesday afternoon, we're going to be seeing a pretty strong cold front move through with some isolated damaging winds and some isolated heavy falls as well, uh, especially impacting areas between Geraldton right down towards the south coast, including Perth itself. Um, and yeah, like I said, just great model congruency between all the major forecast models. The Axis G3 is a bit of a wild card right now, but it normally is a bit of a wild card forecast model. It's calling for a bit of a honky dory low pressure system to develop outside of the Perth area. Uh, that's a bit weird, and I don't think that's going to happen, especially considering how well, I should be saying cold the Lewin current is right now. I don't think a weather event like this is feasible in the current environment, but it still looks like Wednesday, Thursday, next week, there's going to be some good rainfall coming through to the Perth metro area. I covered it yesterday and I'll continue to cover it in the next week or so because it really does look like an interesting cold front. In terms of rainfall accumulations, it looks really good for the coast, especially for locations between Jury and Bay down towards Bustleton and Albany. The south coastal regions picking up up to 100 millimetres, the southwest capes up towards 75 millimetres, Bunbury about 60 millimetres or so. Mandra also picking up about 60 and Perth itself picking up a healthy 50 millimetres. A lot of rain is expected around the Perth metro area and all of the suburbs as well. Unfortunately it doesn't look like it makes it over the Darling Ranges. A couple of good drops still expected in the wheat belt, especially in towards the western parts of the wheat belt and thankfully the southwest which are in desperate need for some rainfall. But areas um, once you get towards the uh, east of sort of Brookton or York, the rainfall will start to drop off, but still 20 millimetres expected, and the eastern wheat belt really going to be lucky to get some good rainfall here. You can see it kind of stops at around Dalwall and New Kalani and then down in a line towards Ravensthorpe, and it really doesn't make it. Uh, much further inland, which is kind of where the wheat belt does end, but still the rainfall on the edge of the wheat belt going to be very hit and miss, uh, which is uh, normal in a front like this, but it's been relatively unusual this year. Normally the hit and miss rainfall has been in the centre of the wheat belt. It's been a very weird winter season, and you can already start to see some good rainfall as well around Carnarvon up towards 30 millimetres, and good rainfall in towards the Pilbara as well. That'll be a very good soak in the uh, way of wildflower season, so some fantastic news for flower lovers up there and travellers. That does look like a pretty good amount of rainfall coming through and it is like I said reciprocated amongst the forecast models the GFS saying something a little bit differently in terms of the spread of the rainfall but it is a relatively similar amount especially considering the GFS has a much lower model resolution which means it struggles to crank out the details that normally the other models can provide the Axis G3 calling for something completely different however so we're going to have to wait and see on what this forecast model has to say I don't think the Axis G3 is going to be the one that pans out to be accurate in a weather event like this but still we're going to have to wait and see that's kind of the story for these cold fronts we've just got to wait and wait and wait and it's only going to be about three or four days out when we start to get a really good forecast on what's actually happened if I've left anything unanswered in terms of the weather event for uh, the eastern states, especially for New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania, if you do live there, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I'd look forward to respond to as many as I can. I did actually neglect the big metro areas along the east coast of New South Wales, so I'll just touch on those really quickly. Sydney is actually not expecting any rainfall from this weather event at all. Uh, Newcastle expecting a couple of drops, but the majority of that coming through today, about 15 millimetres of the stuff today. Brisbane as well, not expecting any rainfall. The coastal suburbs however add a chance of some rainfall in the next 24 to 36 hours. Um, Melbourne also expecting some good rainfall up towards 25 millimetres of the stuff so that's very good for them uh, and it will be more towards there. Um, eastern suburbs where the rainfall accumulations could approach 100 millimetres. This is a very weird weather system. I certainly haven't seen anything like this on the weather forecast in my, um, oh, what, in probably six years of looking at the forecast models at this time, six years of weather tracking. It's something that I haven't seen before, and it's something that is relatively uncommon. I did say once in a decade, I think the news is going to make this out to be a once in a century weather event, but it isn't that uncommon, and I think that's doing it a massive injustice. It's going to be a strong weather event, but it isn't going to be well denning just make sure to stay warm stay prepared and stay on top of the weather forecast and the weather event like this that's your best bet in staying as safe as possible also let me know what you think of the windy.com radar plus feature it looks absolutely fantastic i found out that it's got it last night and i really do love it so it's radar overlaid with the satellite imagery and you can really make it uh, your own. You can make the satellite imagery here. You can have different bands of uh, satellite imagery as well, a visible and also the blue, the classic Cyclone Zoz blue uh, here. And it really does look fantastic. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And you bet it will be a staple of videos to come. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run this show without them. And they are the reason why I've got access to windy.com. It supports 
Uh, the channel th fantastically and, and like I said their support is absolutely uh, priceless to this channel so thank you so much to all of them their names are on screen right now uh, so thank you so much for the recent support in the videos as well please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and also leave a like on the video as well your support is greatly appreciated and that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye